If you've been following this channel for a while now, you should know that I have reviewed and tested a good number of lights. Today we have this 200 watt bicolor COB light from Mambili called the CFL 200 BI and I have been using it here in the studio. Before I talk about my findings, I have to let you know that Mambili did not pay me for this review and even though they sent me the light for free, they have not said in this video I get to keep the light and if I like it and since that is out of the way, let's roll intro. So the Mambili CFL 200BI, like I said, is a 200 watt bicolored light with a color temperature range of 3000 to 500 Kelvin with no green or magenta correction. According to Mambili's spec sheet, it has a CRI of 97, TSI of 98, features Bluetooth 4.0 for wireless connectivity, which we will talk about, has a few effects and there's also something unique. We'll also talk about that later on in this video. For build quality, I am impressed with how well this is built. The body of this light is made of a metal aluminum alloy except for the rear panel where you have the controls is made of a plastic. It weighs 1.56 kilograms or 3.44 pounds and doesn't feel heavy. There are dual locks to lock in the light, has enough ventilation holes at the top and bottom of its body. At the back where you have the controls, you have two dials, an LED screen, a power switch, and an XLR power port. And before I talk about its uniqueness, it has a length of 21 centimeters from the handle up onto the end of the light with the bowens installed and a width of 13 centimeters. Now for the unique things about this light, it has extra mounting points and the ability to power via a battery. And even though I have reviewed several lights, this is the first light that I have ever tested with an extra mounting point. So you have one at the top and the second at the bottom where you have the ventilation grills and there are quarter threads which is actually great as you can rig multiple of these lights together in whatever setup you want. For the price of this light, you can buy these for $199 if you're buying them in the US. It comes with a well padded card box which has the light itself, two manuals, one for operating the light while the other one is for operating it via the mobile app, a five meter power lead and its adapter and the nice thing is that the adapter has a hook, which is very thoughtful of them. And it's also an LED cover to protect the LEDs. So for the mini and controls, operating this light is straightforward and simple. I like that you can control the light using the onboard controls, just as you would with this mobile app. And about the mobile app and wireless connectivity and range, the spec sheet say that you can control it from a range of up to 50 centimeters. All right, so now I have the light lined this way. I have it plugged in. I'm gonna turn it on so I can show you the many controls. I have my Sony A74, which will be getting this side of the light. It's turned on, I'm recording, just to make sure I'm recording. Yes, yes, so I'm recording. I will now fire on the light, it should be at 1%. So this is how it is at 1%. You can see how bright it is with the reflector on it. So I have it set at 1% at 600 Kelvin. And to simply, increase or decrease the intensity of the light, I can just rotate the dim switch or the dim dial. So that's 1% up to 100% and then I'll kill that down. Let's go back to one. And you can already hear the fans are sp spinning. I'll leave the 1%. This is how it sounds with um, the fans on at 1%. Just to show you how it sounds at 50%, I'll increase the light to, so that's 50%. I don't know if it's, there's any changes in how it sounds. I'll keep quiet for two seconds. So that's 50%. I can hear it from this distance. I'll lift it up to my eye level. What do you guys think? That's at 50%. Usually you would leave it for a while for it, for it to, you know, be hot for a while. And so you can see how truly it sounds or hear how truly it sounds. But that's 50% for a few seconds. And I'll push it up to 100%. So I just have my Sennheiser MK416 just above my head pointing towards me or out of frame. I'll raise it up a bit. So that's a hundred percent brightness at for a few seconds. I'll kill it down to one percent. So that's one percent, and I'll change the color temperature by change, uh, rotating the CCT dial, which is the dial closer to me. So that's 500 Kelvin. 
down to 3,000 Kelvin and I'll take it back up to 5,600 Kelvin. Now for the other things I can do with the control knobs, if I press the dim button, it's gonna switch to an effect mode. So be aware it's gonna be flashing. So that's the effect. If I press the CCT knob, it changes to for me to adjust the speed. So I can adjust the speed at which the effect is happening. If I press it again, it shows me some other options. I don't remember what this is. But I'll press it once again to go back to how it was. Then if I press the dim knob again, it goes into an SOS mode. So this has also an SOS mode. And if I press the dim knob again, it goes back to CCT mode. So this light has 12 effects. So I have my iPad here, I'm recording the screen so you can see what I'm doing. Um, I need to place it such a way that it doesn't block the camera over here. The app is called the Manbili Light, so I've gone to the Manbili app. This is the first time I'm connecting my iPad to this light. It has Bluetooth 4.0, like I earlier mentioned. Now the app is open, it shows the light CFL-200DC is that it's disconnected. I, was, I don't need to scan, it's already come up, so I will click connected. And now I'm connected to the app or I'm connected to the light. I'll click into the light and you can see the CCT mode is up there. It's showing 4700 Kelvin on the app. So if I adjust it, it should also adjust. So it's adjusted to 50 kel um, percent. I think it brings down to 1%, but it should be at 6000 Kelvin. So if I bring down to 3000, yes, it also is affected on the light. So I can take it up and bring it down. So that's CCT mode. I can also access, can I access the HSI mode? I don't think I can access it because this is a bicolored light. It, it doesn't have color, so I can access or use the H, HSI mode, but I can use the effects mode and it has one, two, three, four, five. It has 12 effects inbuilt. I can mimic lightning. That's lightning. I can mimic um, flashing light. It can cycle through different effects that and I'll come out of it so it doesn't disturb you guys and I'll take it down to to one percent one percent and I can also activate the SOS mode through did it work the SOS mode didn't work via the app so that's it for the app. I'm gonna go back to CCT mode and set it to 5600 Kelvin and bring it down to 1%. So that's it back at 1%. I'll go back and you can see that I can put the light in a group. So it has list and GPM. So I can put them, you can have this lights in group and control them. And the fantastic thing is because it has the quarter threads at the top and bottom, you can have an array of this light and then control them using the app. Now, this is the first Bowens reflector that I've seen that has a bit of a curve to it. Most of the reflectors I've tried have been straight around the body. So we'll see what effect this has on the beam spread. Once again, the spec sheets claim 7,577 lux at 6,500 Kelvin without a reflector from a distance of one meter and 49,200 lux with a reflector installed. At 3,000 Kelvin from a distance of one meter, they claim 6,338 locks without a reflector and 39,500 locks with the reflector installed. With no modifier, the CFL200 produces a very wide even spread that can light up any light modifier such as a dome. The results are the same regardless of the CCT dialed in and as expected, the shadows are nice and clean. With a supply reflector, it appears to have the beam concentrated in the middle and not fairly consistent light spread. I guess the idea here is to have most of the power concentrated in the middle. Results are the same once again with respect to the CCT. You also get multiple soft shadowing. When I apply the Bowens reflector from my Godox VL150, the beam spread seems to be more concentrated in the middle as with the supply reflector. The results seem to be the same regardless of the CCT dialed in. You also get soft shadowing. 
With my Calibri Passport Video Checker and DaVinci Resolve Scopes and a distance of 1 meter from the light, this is what I get. I have the light set at 5600 Kelvin at 1% while the camera is also set at 5600 Kelvin with a plus 10 magenta correction. So I've just swapped out my Sirius C150X light, which is the light I currently use here in the studio for the Mambili CFL 200 bicolored light. It's currently off. This is how it is with my backlight on and it's at 0%. Using my iPad, the mobile app, I'll push it to 1%. So that's it at 1%. What do you guys think? Any difference? I'll just take it to, let me push it up to 3%. So now it's at 3%. Now regarding areas to improve, I would strongly suggest that the mobile app, although it's very functional and responsive, can be improved in terms of the UI. It's having English and Chinese on it. Maybe just English, and then if you're launching it for the first time, you can choose what you want to work with. Another thing would be to have an umbrella hole, and maybe instead of having two points of locking, maybe just one point. So that's it for today's video, just for the fact that you can rig multiple of these lights together in an array stands out for me. For now, as you can confirm CRI or accuracy of light, as I do not own a Seconic light meter. If you would like to support me with one, I have left a link to one in the description below where you can support me with one or other items I am in need of. Once again, if you like this, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe so you don't miss any of my future videos. I'll see you on the next one. It's your filmmaker. Peace.